Hi, my name is Chris and today I want to give you a very different video. Over the last few weeks, I have made a couple of comparisons between microphones and now I am going to concise all that information into different videos over the course of the next week or so. This information is very packed and dense in those videos in themselves, so I didn't want to clutter them with all kinds of comparisons how those microphones actually sound. So here in this video, I actually give you all those comparisons that I created for those different tests with all the different microphones that I have tested. And there are literally a bunch of them. I have tested everything from podcast microphones with XLR as well as USB connection. I have the DD V Mic D3 Pro, the Rode Video Mic NTG, the Rode Video Micro, Lavier microphones and wireless systems, also a comparison between two different sets. And of course, I also compared all of that to the camera internal microphone, as well as testing how different microphones sound connected to the iPhone, specifically talking about using earbuds for better sound in your video creation or recording of sound in general. I have tested every single microphone on all kinds of different levels. For one, most of the microphones started out on the camera mounted there. Then I have them out of frame right here where it's basically close to me, but it is still a little bit of a distance there. And then I started to move backwards with uh, the distance between me and the microphone growing in this room here. One thing I wanna say about the room itself, it is not necessarily sound treated. There are a couple of carpets on the floor, there's a couch, there's my desk and all those things that you see behind me, but the walls don't have any sound treatment. This is not necessarily intentional and at the same time it is kind of intentional for this test because I think that this test also shows how different types of microphones can be used in a room that is not necessarily very much treated to be used as a studio. So for example if you go on location for some type of recording you might want to know how different microphones sound even if the room itself is not necessarily perfect for this. However it is still on my mind to also introduce Introduce some sound panels in this studio so that the sound quality is improved even more. Now again, the microphones range from in-camera to shotgun microphones to podcasting microphones, more of the voice direct microphones and with all different kinds of mounting positions so that you can hear for yourself how all those things compare to each other as well as to different scenarios in terms of the distance to the microphone and so on. Now this video specifically is just that comparison. It's rather long, about 45 minutes or so of simply doing all those tests and you can listen to those yourself. I didn't do any additional changes in the back end. I basically just left everything as default. I just ordered the shots, cleaned them up a little bit in terms of the uh, pauses in between and stuff like that. But other than that, you pretty much get exactly what you would get coming into your editing program of choice with the offloaded footage from the camera. So that is actually intentional so that it is just a default look at everything. I didn't even do any normalization or EQing, it's just bare bones audio from the camera. And of course, some of the sound will be rather silent and some of it will be a little louder. That is because sometimes being closer to the microphone and then of course, walking away from the microphone, the sound gets lower and lower. And of course, you then could adjust for that with adding more gain. However, I also wanted to see with this test how silent background noise gets as soon as you distance yourself more and more from the camera and the microphone. So why am I uploading this video here? Mainly it is because I'm now planning on making comparison videos between different kinds of microphones as well as different microphones of the same kind on this channel in the coming week or so. And that heavily relies on those microphone tests. However, I didn't want to clutter those videos with all of those tests. I will have some tests here and there in those videos as well. However, for the most part, I'm just gonna reference this video, but with the chapter markers in the description down below as well as in the player bar on YouTube, you will be able to jump around with the different tests, see for yourself how the ATR2100 compares to the Shure Beta 57A or the Rode VideoMic NTG to the Rode Video Micro or the DD D3 Pro as well as the Rode Wireless Go, comparing that with the SmartLav to the Comica Boom XD2. So you have all those tests in this video and 
yeah, you can just enjoy that and listen for yourself which type of microphone might be good for you, which microphone you may want to choose for upgrading your audio gear and your video production or podcast production for that matter. So without further ado, please know that some of the audio is louder and some of it is more silent. So keep an eye out for that and don't wreck your ears. And of course, listen to all of this with headphones because then you can get much more of the nuance between those different tests and listen in to those. So without further ado, here are the tests. First test with the id camera microphone on the EOS R set to about halfway on the internal audio gain. This is about arm's length from the lens, so also arm's length from the microphone. Right now I am practically talking directly into the internal microphone. Now I set the gain to one quarter on the audio gain internally on the Canon EOS R and I am practically speaking directly into the microphone input left and right of the Canon logo straight on from in front of the lens. The interesting thing is that the Canon EOS R actually has stereo microphones, so they are actually also recording the sound differently depending on whether or not I'm talking from the front or if I'm talking from one of these sides. And this is me speaking from directly behind the camera on the Canon EOS R internal microphone. Now I'm back talking into the internal microphone on the Canon EOS R from about an arm's length away. This is about one meter away from the position where I usually would put a microphone that I can put off camera. However, with the internal microphone, I cannot do that. So this is about one meter away from the place where I would put a microphone normally in doing my talking head video. Now this is about two meters away from the position where I would usually put a microphone. And this is how it sounds when I'm this far away from the Canon EOS R in this room. Right now you're hearing how the audio sounds when you're using the Apple AirPods as your microphone and this is how it sounds and of course you can do that for videos, WhatsApp messages, TikToks and so on but this is how it sounds compared to other types of microphone that you could also be using. Right now you're listening to the audio recorded with the Rode Reporter app straight from the iPhone 11 Pro Max. This is how it sounds when I'm recording straight into the microphone, basically holding it straight in my hand. And of course, you can also do this by holding it the other way around and holding it into someone's face to use the bottom microphone here to record your guest or whoever you are wanting to record with. I now put the microphone on the desk right here, which is already about an arm's length away from my body. However, I also want to demonstrate the distance to the microphone. So right now I am moving backwards and again it is put it on a desk about half a meter down from my speaking height and lying there on the desk now also about one meter away from my body. And now I am about two meters away from the microphone and the microphone again the iPhone is put on a table just sitting there recording my voice. This is how it sounds in this type of room. Right now I am using the headphones that come with the iPhone or at least one of my iPhones. These are the wired headphones and the recording app is the Rode Reporter. This is how the audio sounds connected to the iPhone and with the wired headphones that can be used with the iPhone of course and the lightning port right here. Now I am going to leave these right here. Right now I have the headphones dangling on the contraption where I had the other microphones in the other tests as well. This is about the distance to the microphone that I would have when I am using the microphone on my body, either hanging right there or in my ear. And now I'm going to move away so you can see how the microphone reacts to distance. Right now I am about one meter away from the Apple wired headphones. Right now I am about two meters away from the Apple wired headphones and this is how it sounds in this type of room. This test is specifically to see whether or not these headphones are also usable as 
add-ons or quality improvements to the audio quality of just using your iPhone or if just using your iPhone would be better off. Right now I am testing the Comica Boom XD2 with the Attuner cable, which is supposedly made for Sony, Panasonic, Fujifilm, etc. for a lesser gain. So I had to set the internal gain on the Canon EOS R actually about one quarter higher than I had to do with this type of cable, which is the cable which is labeled for Canon, Nikon, etc. So this is the difference that this orange ended cable does. It makes the signal a little less loud for certain camera manufacturers, which may have a gain that is relatively hot or a audio input level that's relatively hot. This is how it sounds directly on my body with that extra cable. Now I have the microphone hanging on this contraption and it sounds like this. Now this is the inbuilt microphone on the transmitter of the Boom XD from Comica and this is one meter away with the attuner cable. And this is about two meters away from the contraption uh, with the Comica Boom XD inbuilt microphone. Right now I am testing the Comica Boom XD transmitter built-in microphone now with the foam screen which comes with the set. This is how it sounds when it's connected right to the t-shirt like this and speaking of course in front of the camera but this of course doesn't matter because I can move around and the microphone is always going to stay with me. Right now I'm also going to put the whole set on top of this contraption right here. Now I have the Comica Boom XD2 inbuilt microphone hanging on this contraption to demonstrate the distance. So right now I'm speaking basically straight into it. Now I move back to about one meter of distance to the microphone and this is how it sounds. And now I'm speaking from about two meters distance to the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. Right now I'm testing the Boom XD2 internal transmitter microphone. This is a wireless transmitter set. It has a receiver right there and a transmitter. A genius thing is that you can actually get two transmitters with this set and you have one receiver and that does all the work for you. Right now the receiver is set to output at the level of 12, which is the maximum output this device can provide. And the camera internal audio gain is set to about between the first two knobs. So out of four knobs there are, in between the first two knobs, that's where I set the camera internal gain. Testing the internal microphone or the built-in microphone of this transmitter right here on my collar bone. So this is how it sounds when I am directly in front of the camera. Of course you know the drill. When I move backwards to this position, which is one meter away from the camera, it makes barely any difference except for the room noise. And I am also moving two meters away from the camera, but the microphone stays with me all the way through. So this is how it sounds. Now I'm also going to leave this microphone right here on this contraption. Right now I have left the microphone hanging on this contraption and this is how it sounds when it's there basically the same distance from my body as if it were right here, maybe a little more and further away. Now I move backwards to about one meter away. This is about one meter away to the microphone and this is how it sounds. And this is about two meters away from the Boom XD2 transmitter and receiver right now testing the inbuilt microphone. Right now I am testing the Comica Boom XD with the lavier that ships with the set. So this is how it sounds connected straight to my body with the cable made for Canon. So this is the uh, non-attuniated cable, something like that. And the gain on the receiver is set to 12, uh, so it's plus 12 and that's sent to the camera. Right now the camera gain is set to middle point between the first two points. So it's four points in total and it's in the middle of the first two points, about 10 clicks from zero. This is how it sounds with the microphone connected or placed right at my body. Right now I have set the microphone hanging from this contraption for distance effect. This is the microphone basically the same distance as if I have it on my body, speaking straight into it. Now I am moving backwards to about one meter of distance and this is how the Comica Boom XD Lavier microphone sounds through the wireless connection. And this is how it sounds at about two meters away with the Comica Boom 
XT wireless lavier microphone in this type of room. And we are back to the front of the microphone and speaking straight into it. This is with the foam ball on the microphone. Right now I am testing the Comica Boom XD Lavier microphone with the Comica Boom XD Lavier set or the wireless set. This is the microphone without the foam ball. It is connected straight to the t-shirt right here and this is how it sounds. Right now I have the microphone without the foam dangling from this contraption. This is how it sounds, practically the same distance to my body as if it were on the cola right here. Now I am moving back to about one meter distance. This is how it sounds at about one meter distance. And this is how it sounds from about two meters to the microphone. Right now I am testing the Comica Boom XD wireless set with the Rode SmartLav Plus connected with a adapter cable. The Rode SmartLav Plus has the foam cable on it and the Comica Boom XD is connected with the black to black cable which is the non-attenuated cable so it is transmitting the full volume signal. The gain is about halfway between the first two points on the Canon EOS R so about 10 clicks from zero and the gain on the Comica Boom XD transmitter is set to 12 decibels or plus 12 and it is the maximum setting that it provides. This is how it sounds with the Smart Laugh Plus directly on my body with the wireless set Comica Boom XD 2. Now I have the Smart Laugh Plus with the foam ball on this contraption right here and as I move backwards this is how it sounds at about one meter distance to the microphone and this is how it sounds and as I move backwards a little further, this is how it sounds about two meters away from the Smart Laugh Plus from Rode connected to the Comica Boom XD2 and also wirelessly transmitting to the Canon EOS R. This is how it sounds when I'm straight talking basically into the microphone, the Smart Laugh Plus with the Comica Boom XD2. Right now I am testing the Comica Boom XD2 with the Rode Smart Laugh Plus connected with a adapter cable and it is not having the foam ball on top of it. This is how it sounds straight on my body. Now the Smart Laugh is connected to this contraption right here. It is hanging there. Right now I am basically speaking directly into it as if it is on my body right here. It does not have the foam ball. The volume settings are the same as before and this is how it sounds from about one meter distance to the microphone. And this is how the Smart Laugh Plus sounds connected to the Comica Boom XD2 and then to the camera with an extension cord. This is again from straight in front of the microphone. Right now I'm testing the Comica Lavier microphone which ships with the Comica Boom XD2 and this is how it sounds when you connect it to the camera straight with a cable. This is with an extension cord which is three meters and this is how it sounds directly connected to the person speaking which is in this case me. Now I'm going to take this off of my body. Now I have the Lavier microphone hanging on this contraption just, just out of frame. I'm demonstrating the distance effect here. So this is how it sounds practically speaking from the same distance as if it were on my body connected with a cord to the Canon EOS R with the gain knob about one third of the way to the top. And now I am moving backwards to about one meter away from the microphone and this is about one meter away and this is how it sounds with the Comica Lavier which ships with the Boom XD2. And as I move backwards further, this is about two meters away from the microphone. This is how it sounds in this type of room. Now I'm back right in front of the microphone. This is the Comica uh, Lavier microphone which ships with the Boom XD2 and it is with the foam on top of it. Right now I'm testing the Comica Lavier without foam. This Lavier microphone ships with the Boom XD2 version and this is how it sounds when it's connected with a cable directly to the Canon EOS R. The volume is about halfway to the top, probably a little hot, may need to turn that down. Right now the Comica Lavier microphone is set to about one third on the gain knob internally on the Canon EOS R. It is connected with a cable straight into the camera. So this is how it sounds. Now I have the Comica Lavier hanging on this contraption to demonstrate the distance to the microphone and how it changes the sound. 
Right now I'm moving backwards. Now I'm at about one meter away from the microphone. And now I'm about two meters away from the Lavier from Comica, which ships with the uh, Boom XD2 set. And this is how it sounds in this type of room. Now I'm back in front of the microphone. This is how it sounds without the foam ball and connected directly to the camera. Right now I'm testing the Rode SmartLav Plus connected right here and connected to the camera with a extension cord cable. This is how it sounds when it's right there on my body with the foam on top and myself being right in front of the camera. However, distance to the camera, as we already know, does not make a huge difference in, this in the sound of Lavier microphones since they stay with the body. Of course, you can do that with a three meter cord, like the connection that I'm using right now, and you can also do the same thing with wireless connections. However, those tend to also introduce some type of noise floor into the mix. Now the microphone is set up on this contraption right here. It is staying there. Also the camera internal gain is set to about halfway to the top with the microphone connected straight to the camera. With a wireless go for example it was only necessary to take it to about one click from zero because the wireless go also introduces a gain to the microphone so that it is transmitted in higher quality so to say. And now the camera has to do that work for you. Now as I move backwards to about one meter away from the microphone with the foam on, this is the Rode Smart Lab Plus. And now I'm about two meters away from the Rode Smart Lab Plus set up directly to the camera and this is how it sounds. Now this is how the uh, Rode Smart Lab Plus sounds with the Canon EOS R connected with an extension cord. Right now I'm testing the Rode Smart Lab Plus without the foam ball the camera internal gain is about at halfway to the top. Right now the microphone is also connected to the camera straight with a cable, which is a three meter extension cord. This is how it sounds connected right to my body, right here to my t-shirt. Now I have the microphone right here on this contraption and as I move backwards, this is the sound of this microphone from about one meter away to the microphone. And this is how it sounds from about two meters away from the microphone. And this is how the Rode SmartLav Plus connected directly to the Canon EOS R sounds in this type of room. I'm now speaking into the Comica Lavier, which I got with the Boom XD2, and it is connected to the Rode Wireless Go transmitter for testing of the sound quality of this microphone with this transmitter. Right now it's just mounted to my t-shirt, so the distance to my mouth stays the same no matter where I am in the room. So going backwards to about one meter, the sound quality should not change whatsoever. And going to about two meters, this is how this microphone sounds in this type of room. Again, the reverberance of the room may be different in different positions in my room. Right here in the front, it may not be as bad as it is right there, at least my ears pick it up that way. However, the distance to my mouth at least does not change. With this microphone, I had to set the internal gain on the camera to about five clicks or seven clicks from zero, so it had to be set a little higher than only using the Rode Wireless Go with the internal microphone. However, there will be also a test with the Rode Smart Lav Plus that I'm using with the Rode Wireless Go. So you might want to listen to that as well. Right now I also mounted the Comica microphone right here on this hanging set here so that we can check the distance and how it sounds. Right now I'm basically right in front of the microphone. Now I'm about one meter away from the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. And now I'm about two meters away from the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. Right now I'm testing the Lavier shipped with the Boom XD from Comica and I'm testing it with the Rode Wireless Go. There's also a test with the Comica Boom XD so you can check that out as well. Right now I'm testing this configuration to check whether or not it makes a difference which wireless transmitter you are using. Right now you are listening to the non-foam version of the Boom XD Lavier microphone with the Rode Wireless Go. And this is how it sounds connected to my body just like this. Now I position the microphone just on this hanging rig right there. Right now I am about 
the same distance as if it would be on my collar. However, now I'm moving backwards and now I'm at about one meter away from the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. And now I am about two meters of distance to the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. I'm now testing the Rode Wireless Go with the internal microphone. This is a Lavier set which has a receiver and a transmitter and the transmitter has a built-in microphone. This is how it sounds with that microphone clipped just to my collarbone right here. Now the microphone set is set to the maximum output gain and the camera internal gain is set to one click from zero, practically the lowest that you can go. This is how it sounds when it's attached to my body just like this. Now I have positioned the Rode Wireless Go right here on the pole. The microphone is pointed toward my face and I'm going to move backward so we have a comparison how the distance to the microphone affects the sound. Now I'm speaking from about one meter away from the microphone. Now I'm speaking from about two meters away from the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. However, I also want to make clear that obviously with this type of microphone, the benefit is that you can move away from the camera without the quality of sound degrading. So basically, now I walk away from the microphone or the camera in this case, I am now at about one meter distance to the microphone and the receiver. However, the microphone is still with me, so the sound quality is still the same. And now I'm about two meters away from the camera and the receiver. However, the transmitter is still with me, so the sound doesn't really change all that much. Maybe it changes because of the reverberance of the room is different here than it is in front of the camera. However, that's the only difference. The microphone is still with me. The audio is still being picked up right and close to my mouth. So that should be really good. Right now I have set up the Rode Wireless Go with the Smart Lav Plus and it has the foam on it. And this is how it sounds connected to myself and the cola right here. Moving back to about one meter. Right, this is how it sounds and moving back to two meters and this is how it sounds. Now, of course, we also do this test with the microphone mounted on top of this rig right here. Now, this is how it sounds with the Smart Lav Plus right here on this wireless Go set. As I move backwards from the camera, this is how it sounds from about one meter away from the microphone. And this is how it sounds from about two meters away from the microphone. This is the Smart Lav Plus connected to the Wireless Go with the foam on top of the Smart Lav Plus. It is with the wireless solution. The gain is about seven clicks from zero and this is how it sounds. Right now I'm testing the Rode Smart Lav Plus connected with an adapter to the Wireless Go set as a Smart Lavier that is also wireless. This is a very practical setup, so let's check it out and see how it sounds. This is with the smart left setup right on the neck here. And now I'm moving away from the camera and as per usual with Lavier microphones, this does not necessarily change the sound of this microphone. It might change because of the room dynamics. This is about two meters away from the camera. However, the effect of me being away from the camera doesn't change much because the microphone at least is still the same distance to my body. Now I have set up the Smart Lav Plus connected to the Rode Wireless Go right here on this hanging rig so I can show and demonstrate the distance effect. Right now I'm practically speaking as the same distance as it would be if it's on my collar right here. Now I'm moving backwards from the camera. This is about one meter away from the microphone and, and now we are about two meters away from the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. Right now I'm testing the DD VMic D3 Pro mounted on the camera with the foam and right now the camera is about arm's length away so I still could carry the camera with my arm which would be a vlogging scenario and this is how it sounds. Camera is set to one quarter on the Canon EOS R and the audio on, or the gain on the microphone is set to the loudest setting possible. 
Now I positioned the microphone right here inside of the frame. It is very close to my mouth and practically directly speaking into it. This is how it sounds with me speaking into the foam. This is how it sounds when I turn toward the side and this off axis rejection with the foam put onto the microphone. And this is how it sounds again from in front of the microphone. Now I have moved backwards to about one meter away from the position of the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. And I moved away to about two meters from the microphone capsule and this is how it sounds in this type of room. I am now testing the DD VMic D3 Pro mounted directly on the camera. Right now I'm about arm's length away from the camera, which also means I'm about arm's length away from the microphone. And this is how it sounds with the Canon EOS R set to one quarter of the internal microphone gain. Now I have the DD VMic D3 Pro mounted on my little boom arm here, connected to the internal recording of the Canon EOS R. The gain is still set to one quarter on the internal gain on the microphone uh, on the camera and on the microphone it is actually set to the loudest setting possible. And now the microphone is positioned right out of frame right there, pointed around my chest area, which should result in a very clear signal, not much of the popping sounds. And the internal gain is still at one quarter and the microphone gain on the, uh, on the microphone is still set to the maximum. Now I want to test the off axis rejection. So I am moving around the microphone talking from one side and moving toward the back and now talking from the back of the microphone, turning around again to the front of the microphone. Now I'm at about one meter away from the microphone and this is how it sounds in this type of room. And now I am standing about two meters away from the DD VMic D3 Pro and this is how it sounds in this kind of environment and with the exact same audio settings that I described before. I'm now testing the Rode Video Micro with its foam ball also for wind protection. This is how it sounds with the microphone mounted directly on the camera, basically an arm's length away from where I am standing. This is the kind of vlog type position. The audio gain is again set to about one third to the top. So it's basically set to a pretty loud setting compared to battery powered microphones. This of course is because of the microphone not having any battery power and thus not outputting a hot signal. I now have the Rode Video Micro mounted on my boom arm right here. I'm practically speaking directly into the microphone. The camera gain is set to halfway to the top and this is how it sounds. Now as I move around the microphone to the sideways position, this is how it sounds with the foam ball on it. Now moving back to the front of the microphone, this is how it sounds. Moving back to about one meter away, this is how the Rode Video Micro with the foam ball sounds in this type of room. And moving away to about two meters, this is how the Rode Video Micro sounds in this type of room. Now I'm testing the sound of the Rode Video Micro mounted directly on the camera and basically an arm's length away. So this would be the vlog type scenario. This is the Rode Video Micro without the foam wind protection. This is going to straight into the camera. The microphone does not have any gain setting. It is not powered by battery, so there's nothing set there. However, the camera internal gain on the Canon EOS R is set to about two thirds to the maximum. So it's relatively high compared to the battery powered microphones that I just tested. This is how it sounds directly mounted on top of the camera. Now I have the Rode Video Micro mounted right here, which is on my little boom arm right there. It is connected to the camera. The gain internally on the camera Canon EOS R is set to halfway to the top. So that's relatively loud compared to other types of microphones, which are battery powered. This is how it sounds from in front of the microphone. And as I go off axis, this is how the Rode Video Micro sounds. And when I go behind the microphone, this is how it sounds from there. Now coming back to the front of the microphone, this is how it sounds from the front of the microphone. And of course, if I move back, this is how the Rode Video Micro sounds from one meter away. 
and this is how the Rode Video Micro sounds from about two meters away in this type of room. Now I'm testing the Rode Video Mic NTG with its foam on. The gain on the microphone is back to 15, which is the maximum. The internal gain is still at one click from zero. And this is how it sounds in the vlogging position about arm flanks away from the microphone and the camera with the microphone mounted on top of the camera. And this is how it sounds in this type of room. Now I have the now I have the Rode Video Mic NTG mounted directly in front of my face and this is how it sounds with the foam on top and as always the gain is very very hot so I'm downing it to 10. Now this is how the Rode Video Mic NTG sounds with the camera internal gain set to one click from zero and the microphone gain set to 10 which is one third of the total output volume possible. This is how it sounds practically talking directly in the microphone and as I go off axis this is how it sounds with the foam on when I'm talking from one of these sides. Now I'm going to move backwards to about to about one meter. This is how it sounds from one meter away and this is how it sounds from two meters away with the Rode Video Mic NTG in this type of room. Now I'm testing the Rode VideoMic NTG without the foam screen. The microphone is mounted directly on the camera. The camera is about arm length away with a 24 millimeter lens. So this is basically what it would sound like in a vlogging scenario when I could still hold the camera. The internal gain is set to just about one from zero. So it's one click from zero and the gain on the microphone is set to the maximum possible. Now I have positioned the Rode Video Mic NTG just right here. I'm practically speaking directly into it and I noticed that it's basically clipping all the time. So since the internal gain is already basically at zero or the lowest position possible, I will now have to reduce the gain on the microphone. Now the gain on the microphone is down to 10 from 15 possible positions. So it's now about one third down from the maximum output of the microphone when speaking directly into the microphone like this. Now I'm moving around the microphone for the off axis rejection. This is me talking right from the side. And of course I also talk from the back of the microphone so you can hear how that sounds. Moving back around the microphone through the front of the microphone. Now I have positioned the Rode Video Mic NTG just out of frame down here. This is a practical position for talking head videos like I am doing right now. The microphone is pointed toward my chest area so it's not picking up as much from the plosives but it's a great way to position the microphone overall. Now I brought the microphone back up to this position and I'm going to move away from the camera. Now this is about now this is about one meter away from the microphone. And this is about two meters away from the Rode Video Mic NTG and this is how it sounds in this type of room. Now I am speaking straight into the ATR 2100 with the foam ball and a USB cord connection. This is how it sounds with this USB cord connection and this is also a little handling noise with cable for example moving against the holder in this case. It is also a little bit of a um, springy cord based uh, holder so it's not necessarily transporting bumps from desks and stuff like that. However I have noticed that cable movement is usually something that is very well transported into the microphone. This is how it sounds talking straight into the foam ball. This is how it sounds talking from the side of the microphone and as I move further away this is now coming up to one meter. This is the distance of one meter to the ATR2100. And this is the distance of two meters to the ATR2100 and this is how it sounds in this type of room. Back to the front of the microphone, straight into the microphone, talking really, really close to the microphone. This is probably also too loud. However, this is also something that you might wonder. This is me talking straight into the ATR2100. This is with the USB connection straight into my MacBook Pro. This is me talking straight into the microphone like this with about an inch, maybe two or three centimeters of a distance. This is hand holding it. So as I am moving it to my hands, this is the handling noise. Also a little bit of the cable handling noise as I have found that this may also interrupt or have certain signal issues. This is 
talking straight into the microphone. However, some people also hold their microphones like this. So that's how this sounds. It is obviously not as loud as it would be if the person were to straight up speak into the microphone. And some people also like to talk into the side of the microphone. Obviously also not as sounding or uh, volume loud and also not as quality. If the person is talking straight into the microphone, that's a whole different story and obviously the proper way to use this microphone. This is how it sounds with the USB connection, which is a special feature of the ATR2100. Right now I am testing the ATR2100 connected via USB to my MacBook Pro. This is how it sounds, basically talking straight into the microphone. And as I move around the microphone, this is how the microphone sounds. And as I am now behind the microphone, this is how it sounds. Now I am going back to the front of the microphone. This is how it sounds right in the front of the microphone. Now I am moving backwards to the about... Now I am at about one meter distance to the microphone, ATR2100. And now I'm about two meters away from the microphone ATR2100 and this is how it sounds. Now I am coming back to the microphone right to the front. This is how it sounds from the front. Now I am putting it just out of frame. Now the microphone is just out of frame. So this would be the situation of a talking head like this with this microphone just out of frame. So it's not visibly disturbing the frame. This is only possible if it is also actually this close to the camera because as I move further away, I would also have to put the microphone further down and away from my body. Now, now I am testing the Audio-Technica ATR2100. This is how it sounds with the foam ball with an XLR connection to the Zoom H5. This is again from straight into the microphone. Now I am moving backwards to about one meter to the microphone. And this is about two meters to the microphone ATR2100 connected to the Zoom H5 with an XLR cord. And this is how it sounds in this double room. And right now you are listening to the ATR2100 right now from in front of my mouth with me hand holding the XLR connection. As you can see, now this test is to see handling noise. So as I move this microphone between my hands, one thing to keep in mind is that there's an on off switch, which may, uh, may be needed to just tape it over with. Otherwise, uh, your guest or whoever you are giving this microphone to may actually switch it on or off. Now I'm also doing a little cord fidgeting because sometimes that's what guests do. This is how it sounds from straight into the microphone, just like this. Some people also hold it like this. So this is how it sounds if that ever happens. Or someone might actually just hold it like this and basically speak to it from the side. This, of course, is straight into the microphone from the front. But also, as you get a little closer and really, really speak into the microphone, it might also not be the smartest idea. A couple inches away, a couple centimeters away, that's probably the best sounding audio. So this is how it sounds with the ATR2100 with the XLR connection. Right now I am testing the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB as well as XLR microphone. Right now it is connected via XLR to the Zoom H5 and then from there with the line output to the Canon EOS R. And right now I am speaking directly into the microphone. I will also do a test with this little foam ball. So that's also going to be in there. Right now there's nothing in between my mouth and this microphone. And right now you're hearing just that. I'm also going to write in the video whether or not you're listening to the WAV file or the audio coming from the Canon EOS R, which is connected to the audio recorder with a line output. So this is how it sounds from straight on to the microphone. As I move around the microphone to the side of the microphone, this is how it sounds. And if I go back to the back of the microphone, this is how it sounds from straight back on the microphone. Going back around to the front, this is how it sounds. And now I'm going to move away from the microphone. Right now I am about one meter away from the microphone and this is how it sounds. And now I am about two meters away from the microphone ATR2100 from Audio-Technica and this is how it sounds. This again is the XLR connection with the Zoom H5 and no foam ball. It is just the microphone like this. Right now I am testing the Shure Beta 57A with the Zoom H5 connected with a aux cable with the line output to the Canon EOS R. 
And right now I am also recording the WAV file in the Zoom H5 and I will signify that which file you are listening to, whether it's the camera internal or the Zoom H5 WAV file, which is uncompressed audio. Now, this is a podcasting microphone and I am speaking into it straight from the front of it. There is no pop filter whatsoever. There's also going to be a test with this type of pop filter on top of the microphone. But for now, I am just going to do this test for now. Right now you are listening to me speaking basically straight into the microphone. This is not even a fist away from my mouth. Right now I'm also going to turn around to speak to the side of the microphone to show you the off axis rejection. Turning even to the back of the microphone and this is how it sounds. Now coming back to the front again and going all the way around to where the speaking position should be. And this is how it sounds from straight into the microphone. This is about one meter away from the microphone, which is just out there. And right now I am about two meters away from the Shure Beta 57A, which is connected to the Zoom H5 and then to the Canon EOS R. Right now, this is how it sounds in this type of room with the two meter distance. Now I am back right in front of the microphone and this is how it sounds without the foam ball. And of course, this is a podcast microphone. However, I also want to demonstrate how it sounds when it's out of frame. Right now I have positioned this microphone just out of frame, which is possible because I am also relatively close to the camera, so I don't have to put it very far away. It is maybe this much away from my mouth, which is still probably pretty good, and also a possibility to use in certain circumstances. Right now I am testing the Shure Beta 57A, which is a podcast singing drums instrumental microphone. It is connected to the Zoom H5, and with that, it is connected to the Canon EOS R. I am also going to signify which audio you are going to listen to, whether it's the uncompressed WAV file or the Canon EOS R audio file. Right now, I am speaking straight into the microphone with the foam ball on top of it, and I am now going to move away from the microphone. Right now, I am about one meter away from the microphone, which shouldn't be that great. And this is about two meters away from the Shure Beta 57A, Zoom Pop. And this is about two meters away from the Shure Beta 57A. And this is about and this is about two meters away from the Shure Beta 57A. And it is connected to the Zoom H5. And this is how it sounds in this type of room. Right now I have the Shure Beta 57A in my hand. I want to demonstrate with this the handling noise if someone is handing it back and forth or handing it inside of their hand. So for example, as I do with this right now, I'm speaking, I'm also holding certain parts, I'm curling the cable a little bit, playing around with it. This may be interesting and necessary if you plan on doing any kind of podcast recording and someone is a little fidgety and they are moving around with their hands a lot instead of just holding the microphone very steady in front of their mouth like this. This is also interesting to test how it sounds in different holding positions. Right now I'm holding it, for example, just at my chest, which is also very common for certain people. And if you hold it up to your mouth, it is very, very different compared to just holding it like this and speaking on top of the microphone like that. It may even be helpful to have some kind of stand to have people really in front of the microphone. Again, handling noise and also the way of talking from the side of the microphone if someone is talking like this and of course also again the back check so this is from the back of the microphone coming all the way around to the side of the microphone talking into the capsule from the side and again also talking into the capsule right from the front straight on with about maybe three or four centimeters in between my mouth and the microphone it looks just like this and this should probably be the default position. And you may also hear some clacking with the cables because they are swinging around as well. And that's exactly also purposeful for this test to see how this microphone reacts to transporting noises from all over the place. Right now I have the Zoom H5 internal or like XY microphone that is coming with the Zoom H5. I have it connected to the camera with a cord basically a aux cable from the line output to the camera input. 
that's how I am recording this. I also have the WAV file that I can switch to in between and I will mark that on the screen if I do that. And right now you are listening to the X, Y axis microphone built on top of the Zoom H5, which can be replaced with different types of capsules, but this is just the standard X, Y thingy. The gain on the Zoom H5 is set pretty much to the maximum on that capsule. And the whole setup is on top of the camera, practically an arm's length away. This is basically how it would sound like if I were to put the Zoom H5 into the hot shoe on the camera while vlogging with the X-Type setup with the stereo recording. Right now I have the Zoom H5 set up right here. Basically I'm talking straight into the Zoom H5 with the XY H5. Uh, set up here. This capsule is recording a stereo signal and this is how it sounds from just talking basically into the microphone just like this. Right now I am moving backwards and this is how this contraption sounds from about one meter away with the XYH5 and this is how it sounds from about two meters away with the Zoom H5 XYH5 setup capsule. Now I am also going to go to the side of this device so that you can hear how it sounds from the side and I am now back to the front and this is how it sounds with the XY H5 capsule on the Zoom H5 which is a quite practical recorder. Right now I am using the Zoom H5 with the XY H5 capsule on top of it now connected to the camera still with the line output and I have the foam on top of the XYH5 capsule and this is how it sounds from about an arm's length away basically straight on top of the camera just as if I were to do a vlog type video. Now I move the Zoom H5 basically straight into my face. This is how it sounds, talking straight into this microphone, into the XYH5 capsule with the foam on top of it. This is how it sounds from straight into the microphone. This is how it sounds with the Zoom H5 XYH5 capsule and from one meter away to the microphone. And this is the Zoom H5 with the XYH5 capsule from two meters away. And this is how it sounds in this type of room.